start recording. Beep boop. Hello. We are back. We're Hello. doing. We were just recording a uh, take two of a uh, writer's corner uh, chat episode thingy, and because we're all set, we figured we could do another one, like a follow-up or a post show or. What, or, <laughs> what you call them so this time I, I don't really have a topic or anything I'm just sort of eh. some interesting stuff has happened while I've been away hmm. uh, our friend I, I want to say Adeline let me check uh, you mean Adeline Green I do mean Adeline Green <laughs> Um, he did something rather amazing while I while I was away. He did it before before you went away. You watched the video before you went away. You commented on it. <laughs> no, I commented on it while I was away. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Yeah. Uh, let me let me have a little peeky peeky boo. Um, <laughs> so while while you do the peeky boo, I explain what the situation is. So. Uh, as you know, perhaps, uh, dear viewer, uh, we have a bunch of uh, stories from different times taken from the forum, uh, edited and, uh, and, and cleaned up to a certain point. Uh, one of those stories is, the, uh, is from the very first adventure that Nox and Coyote wrote together, that is called so this is this is the story that everything links back to that everything sort of spawns from and uh, and uh, how does it all where does it all lead <laughs> so uh, on Twitter uh, we tend to link up with different uh, creative folks and have chats and, uh, and and watch their stuff and this is how uh, we came across one uh, Mr. Green uh, who has been doing uh, story readings with some uh, extra so it's it's not just story reading not not like plain audiobook but uh, story plus uh, music original music uh, and he has combined those with uh, uh, with video background and uh, uh, I think I was uh, watching his existing uh, videos and I don't remember how we how the topic came up but basically uh, basically uh, we started talking about doing one of our stories and naturally I said do that one <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it took some time uh, because uh, he recorded the uh, the audio. Uh, then he composed the music, and uh, and then he put it all together. And then while Knox was away, he also added uh, a video background to it and put it all together. So now there is on YouTube there is a reading of the story picking up trash with musical background and some video imagery and how, it's amazing how awesome is that <laughs> uh, again That's we so shall weird. we shall put the link uh, down there mm -hmm. thank uh, you mr green yes and uh i mean we have we have done some readings we we have read our own stories aloud and we have read the other cows know stories aloud but it's a whole other experience when somebody else does it so it's like oh my god a <laughs> real it's a real thing <laughs> yeah i did i did get hen flesh as our favorite <laughs> merchant likes to say yes it was uh i got chills it was great hmm. I, lo I love listening to it yeah another similar experience was when we submitted uh, the first five pages of Seek uh, to the Writership Podcast and uh, they, uh, in Writership Podcast, they analyze your story and they critique it and usually they uh, 
use your uh, submission as an example for for a technique or a uh, or a, uh, a tool uh, to implement and uh, and as, a, as part of that they also read the stories and uh, in the rec more recent episodes or within the last year uh, they don't just read the story on the spot they actually have somebody else record it so it's 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 uh, more polished and more more produced and uh, our story or our submission got a, a proper audio reading and also with uh, with some uh, sound effects and music added and it was glorious <laughs> yes it was so good Gra graham I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I will. I will just put. The, I will just put the link there. <laughs> oh! Oh no! What? I'm banging my arm on all sorts of stuff. Oh no! That pen pot is in a very precarious location. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff is pointing down, though. Oh! I'm start thinking safe. All the stuff is pointing down, so I just knock my arm on rubbers and stuff. Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, those readings are just amazing, mm -hmm. and I love listening to them. They're so good. Um, the other nice thing about the Right Ship podcast is that they we got their feedback and advice, and then we actually mm -hmm. acted on it. So mm -hmm. more recent versions of the Seeker have got uh, some changes to them. Yeah, because um, uh, the uh, the things that uh, Leslie and oh gosh, I, I have I have forgotten the other. The other editor's name, but but anyway, uh, the uh, the crew, uh, the the things that the crew pointed out, uh, they were actually things that we uh, we knew how to how to fix with minimal effort. So if if it if it would have been, uh, so the the idea was that uh, well, the the question that they focused on was uh, conflict, conflict in a story, conflict on a scene level, conflict on a maybe even a sentence level and uh, the way it used to be was that the first chapter of Seeker was very sort of scenery set up. Uh, I, I think uh, Leslie described it as uh, similar to the uh, alien uh, wake up thing. So you, you get you get the view of the ship, you get a view of the wake up, you get a view of the procedure but uh, what they pointed out was that uh, everything was going well uh, and uh, even though there will be more actual conflict later in the story within the first chapter there there were certain things that were not visible but we knew they would be there so uh, i think we we changed like one sentence here and half a paragraph there and uh, added a little bit, like nip, nip and tuck here a little bit, uh, and with those two uh, rather minor changes, uh, we actually uh, achieved having direct conflict right there in the, in the first chapter. So I, I believe it was that uh, uh, Joel doesn't like her privacy intruded, so we. Uh, we made the the idea that she doesn't uh, want the uh, bounty collectors to come into her ship, which just made the thing more visible. Uh, so the the idea was there before, but it wasn't uh, showing from the original text, and now it's showing. Mm. Uh, another thing, uh, more more on the uh, follow-ups and tweaks. Uh, when, I, when I've been, I've been uh, translating Seeker, translating slash adapting uh, Seeker in a serialized format uh, into Estonian, and, and and the last episode shall be shall be released soon. But uh, while doing so, I have also picked up on certain uh, places where I know something to be there, but it's not showing in in text. So uh, occasionally I have written those, added, added or, or tweaked those things in in the Estonian version and I'm, I'm actually running a sort of uh, uh, bug fix list or, or like a bug, bug report uh, document where I'm noting down these little things 
that we could actually uh, fix in the English as well. So there is that. Huh? Yes. Multilingual uh, bonus. <laughs> Um, some other stuff happened as well, but I think we're probably going to give that specific thing its own dedicated episode, perhaps? What, what, what do you mean? I mean the release format of a certain book that has, that has come out recently. Um, we can talk about it now, or we can oh, give it its own show. Let's, let's get it over with. <laughs> we, can, yeah. we can give it our own... Give it. Oh my god, you actually have it! I do, and I think you should hold for five seconds. Of course I have a copy. I bought like three. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there you go. It's so good. It looks fantastic. Everyone Whee! I've shown it to is like, that's that's really cool. So, excellent work. And you did all this while I was away. <laughs> so, I did. I was in a restaurant in, uh, or I was in the cafe section of a supermarket in Hamburg. Uh, and I was scrolling through, I think it was Twitter one morning. And I saw that it was now available in, in paperback format. You can get it from Amazon. Amazing. And I, I, I audibly gasped in in the supermarket. I made a loud noise and it was very... Oh! You know, I was very excited about it. Uh, show, show me the inside. Uh, show, show, me the, show me the front matter. The thing is that uh, I, I was I was too cheap to actually order any copies, so I haven't uh, I haven't actually held the. Ooh. Oh, I thought I, I added. Chapter eighteen, such a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I added an empty blank page there, but maybe I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so now. yeah, I, I, I don't even know how how it got so far that I was able to push it through. I remember that initially, uh, so a little bit less than a year ago, let's say 11 months ago, 10 months ago, uh, when when we were uh, when we were done with the proofreads and edits and all that, and when we were submitting the uh, ebook manuscript to, to Amazon. I remember that uh, that I I was studying the paperback options and I was poking at them. But at the time, all that shit felt so overwhelming. And I, I, I guess the thing is that uh, right now I I I had no intention to actually carry on with the paperback. I just I just wanted to do the homework. I just wanted to check the options and all that. And uh, it could be that I'm just more familiar with the uh, with the Amazon interface now or I'm just more familiar with the formats. But uh, basically the thing is it didn't seem so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so all the, all the shit that had seemed so uh, so overwhelming uh, last August suddenly seemed like, oh, wait, I can do it, I can do it right now. <laughs> and uh, the the only thing that uh, gave me some trouble was the, was getting the cover right. So, uh, oh yeah, I, I think, I think one of the things that was so overwhelming was to decide the, the size and the margins and the and to get the cover right because you don't know how thick it will be initially. So, so there was some formatting, formatting issues. So initially, uh, the uh, the image file that I was able to generate, it didn't work. So there was there was something was slightly off with the with the sizes. So at the at the very beginning, I went with the Amazon's template. Which, which is a pretty pretty useful tool, so it was a possible cover, but it had it, it didn't have shit the way I wanted it to. 
So, <laughs> so I, uh, uh, I think I, I pushed the release button and I, I went ahead with it, which might be where this uh, used copy generated itself. I don't know. I, I'm thinking that it's a, it's a proof copier or something. Uh, but then I, I, I kept on pushing everything very uh, let me tell you <laughs> it's it's all duct tape and goo so all <laughs> freeware the the original cover image was was made in paintnet and the and the PDF for the print was made in uh, an inkscape so <laughs> That's like uh, cheap and inventive right there. So of, <laughs> of course, of course, it is not uh, professional level, but it's I would say it's possible probably. So when when we do get a professional to do a professional color professionally, that will be a whole new level. But for now, uh, I, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, just just keep holding it there. Keep uh, keep smiling. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think that's enough. Uh, you did a fantastic job. Yeah. Does, so does, the, does the back cover have starry stars? <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Yeah, so that's this and it's got ISBN number as well. Yeah, so uh, the ISBN. Yeah, the stuff. ISBN is the one that uh, drop digital generated. And I should actually add it to the ebook as well. Uh, right, right now the ebook doesn't have an ISBN uh, shown with it. And it look, it looks thicker than I thought it would. Pretty. Possible. Yeah, it's about the same thickness as Shell Shock and Split Personality, I think. Yeah. So oh, that's pretty good. Uh, also, the, uh, the salvage the mission. Show me the margins. Like show me the inside view. Uh, show me a bit where it has a. The words oh, okay. are really nicely sized as well. Mm. The I, w I would say that the text formatting was the easy part. Some books I pick up and I, I open a page and immediately my head starts aching at the size of the text. <laughs> I open this and it's like welcoming. It like it wants you to read it. It's nice. hmm. Well, in this case, because it's uh, it's pretty short on its own, uh, I would say I had uh, more wiggle room with the text size, so I could I I could inflate it a little bit because we had uh, the you know. It's 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 not a tome, is what I'm saying. So you can you can get away with uh, with a bit bigger text. It's very nice, very well made as well. Big <laughs> thick uh, glue spine on the back mm -hmm. there, which is never going to fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, there you go. Yeah. It's out in the wild, man. It's it's. It's, the potential is there to make it free and spread its wings and yeah. fly <laughs> our baby to fly. space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Colin first did that when he released his book. He, st he strapped one, a copy of his book to a weather balloon Aww. and sent it up into space. <laughs> and uh, that was sort of like his launch. Oh. Of course. Um, so yeah. 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 So, that was pretty clever. so to sort of. Uh, follow, recap and follow up to the previous uh, Writing Corner episode is that uh, May and June they they passed as if we got in, we didn't like it, at the time it felt like uh, there is no work happening everything is wrong nothing's moving on and now when I look back at this we have actually gotten a shit ton of shit done. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a joke, but I said to Chris the other week I should go on holiday more often <laughs> because when I do, good things happen. So I went away, came back, there's a subway in Benfleet now. <laughs> come on. But I, I go away, come back, Seeker's now available in paperback. It's uh, like, there's got to be a correlation, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I I think I I do admit that the part of the tinkering with Danison was the frustration that nothing's happening. So don't don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yes. No more holidays for me for a little while. I think. Yeah, we, um, we we do need to establish uh, some uh, proper work work protocol again and to get mm. get things uh, ticking again. Oh yes. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. so often. I'm I'm used to thinking. It's like uh, how shall I put it? I know that my capacity to work has its limits, and and there are certain bottlenecks. So I'm used to thinking of my own operation as the bottleneck to the uh, to the work process so when I'm wa finally able to pull my shit together and I try to you know get some shit working and then I find out that everything else or the, the rest of the world is, is lacking off <laughs> then that's special sort of uh, frustration so it's like mm. come on people <laughs> yeah still back now we can yes. wait to foil this. Yes. And mm. also, the sun has reached to the point where my clever repositioning <laughs> is uh, is of no use. <laughs> no, foiled by nature. Anyway, I believe this is a good spot to finish. Show it again. Keep it on the screen while we uh, while while we sign off. So yes. Uh, we have had a uh, surprisingly busy summer. Uh, we are trying to get back into the workflow soonish. But uh, until that happens, uh, revel in the site. There shall be links, there shall be uh, videos. Thank you very much for watching. And we shall be signing off now.